Hello, my name is Kurosh Vatanparvar. I'm a graduate student from ASCPS lab at UCI working on smart energy system. I will give a brief overview of our contributions and research we have conducted on this topic. Energy systems or power grid is composed of power electronic devices. These devices have the capability of consuming, generating, distributing, and storing energy. The main objective of utilities is to provide the consumers electricity demand while maintaining the grid efficiency. There are many challenges regarding the grid operation. Typically, renewable energy resources are not available at all times, and the daily pattern of power demand has large peaks, which make it challenging for the utilities to match the load especially peak load during the day. Managing the energy consumption at the grid level or home level has been enabled by implementing smart devices like sensors, actuators, and embedded systems. However, these devices add complexity to the power grid and the corresponding to cyber-dominated controls. Previously, the designers were required to mainly focus on the power grid, which was the physical world. However, by introducing the cyber world, multiple domains are involved to be explored. Hence, design, simulation, and verification of this multi-domain system is challenging. The smart energy systems integrate both physical and cyber systems. Physical system, which is the traditional power grid, typically contains the power flow, energy resources, and storage, which are modeled by the designers in continuous time domain. Grid Lab D has been the most powerful tool for modeling distribution power grids and power electronics and solving the power flow problems. On the other hand, cyber systems deal with the monitoring and control process, and bus controllers are implemented by the designers in discrete time domain. Typically, MATLAB Simulink are used to implement and simulate the controllers, since they provide us with much powerful mathematical computations and large control design libraries such as final state machine and model predictive control. Designers needed the tools so that they can design, simulate, and verify the smart energy systems or cyber physical energy systems, considering both cyber and physical domains. We implemented the MATLAB Simulink Toolbox, which fills the gap between physical modeling and advanced controller design. This has been done by integrating the powerful tools of each domain, GridLab D from physical world and MATLAB from cyber world. GridMath features friendly graphical user interface. It can be used to create a structural and behavioral model of residential microgrids. It deploys MATLAB debugging features for testing and control design. It can also be used to analyze and verify the data and simulation results. For more detailed information about GridMap and the experimental case studies, you can refer to our webpage and publications. The main research target has become mainly towards decreasing the total energy consumption in the grid, and we know around 40% of energy consumption is due to the building's share. We targeted towards the solution which is energy efficient buildings, for example, in the state of California, the California Energy Commission planned to reach zero net energy buildings by 2020. There are different methods of managing the energy in buildings or homes, like smart appliance control, in which multiple devices, lighting, heating, cooling, or washing, or EV charging are monitored and controlled efficiently. Moreover, on-site renewable energy can be used instead of power grid. Also, the load in the house can be controlled directly or get adjusted by pricing policy in order to shift the load and reduce the electricity peak demand. These methodologies are implemented as part of a framework called Home Energy Management. Implementing Home Energy Management possesses multiple major challenges. The platform should be easily deployable. It should provide the required connectivity between devices or even for user or utility for local remote monitoring. The platform needs to be scalable so that the user or utility can add new devices easily like plug and play or extending the down of operation, for example, into building or microgrid levels. The platform implementation cost is another major concern. The platform is better to be built using existing off-the-shelf devices with low power consumption. The customizability is part of making the platform cost effective because the product can be made cheaper. This is why open architecture platform is preferable. We have implemented home energy management over a networking platform called Fog Computing. Here, multiple open source routers are utilized to provide the connectivity and computation required. 
Since the computation is at the edge of the network, it's called fog computing. The customizability has been reached by implementing the control as a service using web-based protocol for IoT. This service-oriented architecture enables a dynamic adaptive software stack which makes it cheaper for consumers. It also enables us to abstract the heterogeneity existing in lower layers, such as different physical layers and communication protocols. Some of the devices might use various communication protocols like Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or Zigbee. Hence, we have used Raspberry Pi devices to relay the data for incompatible devices. A wireless sensor network is implemented using multiple sensor modules called Telos VMOS. These sensors are connected together to make a hierarchical sensor network. They provide light, temperature, and humidity sensing. They are also used as a remote actuator, for example, in smart lighting. Here you can see a list of hardware used for the HEM platform. As you can see, they are easy to buy off-the-shelf products and easy to deploy. We have discussed about how to implement energy management methodologies for the energy systems in order to reduce energy consumption and improve energy efficiency. We have also provided a tool to design, simulate, and verify the power grid design with its corresponding cyber control. The homeowners, utilities, or aggregators still need a business model to build the infrastructure required for implementing these energy management methodologies. For instance, the homeowners can increase the intermittent renewable utilization by selling the renewables to the power grid utilities or store them in an energy storage like battery banks for later use. They can reduce the electricity peak demand by using the energy stored in their batteries during the big time or shift their demands when they receive a demand response request from the utilities. However, the capital cost is huge which demotivates the homeowners, utilities or aggregator to participate for installing the infrastructure. They need to get motivated from the return and benefit they will get in the future by their investment. Hence, we have considered an aggregator business model for residential microgrid case study. In our business model, we propose the aggregator can provide and install the infrastructure required for the homeowners. The homeowners not only consume power from the aggregator with cheaper price, but also they will produce power using renewables and sell it to the aggregator with higher price that they could sell to the utilities. We have considered two configurations where the renewables are owned by the homeowners, consumers, or the aggregators. We analyze the influence of different energy management methodologies and market risk scenarios on the results of business model, return on investment. We also analyze multiple parameters such as number of houses participating in the plan, the average size of solar panels installed for the houses, the battery capacity, and pricing policy defined by the aggregator. We have modeled a residential microgrid using our grid map tool and simulated and analyzed the results for each case. Thank you for watching. Please contact us if you have any further questions.